Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 tutorial. We are going to take a look at polynomial operations with this video. And so we've got the four operations here that we're going to take a look at. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Thankfully, three of these are easy and only one of them is hard. Um, addition, subtraction, and multiplication are all things that you've done before. And so these should look really familiar. Division is the only hard one. So first, we're going to do addition and subtraction together because they're pretty easy and they work almost exactly the same. So here we have two trinomials that are adding together and we want to combine them. And that's all we do. We combine the like terms. So this like term we can add with this like term here. So 2x cubes and 4x cubes gives us a total of 6x cubes. Then we add the next set of like terms. Let's see here. It looks like the next one we have is just the numbers, the 3 and the 1. I'm going to put that at the end, plus 4. So the others are not like terms, so we cannot combine them. So they're just going to stay without changing at all. And I'm going to do this in descending order. So for the next one I'm going to do is here, minus 2x squared, and then the minus 4x. Those two have to stay separate. They're not actually like terms. So if they're not like terms, they just stay. Otherwise, you can combine them. So there's addition. Subtraction is almost exactly the same, except you have to remember to deal with the minus. And we simply distribute it. That should look really familiar. So this is going to be positive then. That 2 will be negative. This 5 will be positive, And this 5 will turn negative. Now we can just combine like terms like usual. So the 5x to the fourth and the negative 2x to the fourth will combine to be 3x to the fourth. Let's see, we've got x squareds here and here. So a negative 2x squared and a positive 5x squared becomes positive 3x squared. And now the 8 and the negative 5 becomes positive 3. So as you can see that's very similar to addition only you have to distribute the negative. Just make sure you're looking for like terms. Alright like I said addition and subtraction are pretty easy. Let's move on to the next one multiplication. Again this should look really familiar but it just take a little bit longer to do. A couple more steps. Um, but we've done this over and over again. We distribute. So that distributes to all three of them. Now that's something that's slightly new. You have to distribute to all the pieces in the other factor. So this 3x squared we're going to have to multiply three times. So 3x squared and 3x to the fourth is 9x to the sixth. You add the exponents minus 6x to the fourth because 2 and 2 make 4 and 2 times 3 make 6 and 3 times the 5 is 15x squared. Now when you do the next one to make life a little easier you're going to line things up as best as possible. So as we distribute, let's see I'll do that one first. 5 times 3 is 15 x times x to the fourth is x to the fifth. Well there is no x to the fifth so that's going to go right here and it's negative 15. And then 5x multiplies over here so that will be positive 10x cubed. Now there's no like term so I'm not going to line it up with anything. And then negative 5x times 5 is negative 25 x. And actually there are no like terms here. So if these happen to be like terms and they were lined up we could add them but they're not like terms, not like terms, not like terms, not like terms. So actually in this case everything is going to stay separate. So our full answer will be 9x to the sixth minus 15x to the fifth minus 6x to the fourth plus 10x cubed plus 15x squared minus 25x. Whew, 
That was long. They get really long if they don't have like terms. But you can see the process is something we've done before. Distribution. This time you just have to distribute to everything if you have more than a binomial. All right. So that's multiplication. Our last one, and this is the one that's going to be hard, division. So if we divide polynomials, right now our main strategy is long division. And so if you remember long division with numbers, this is exactly the same as it is with numbers, but this time we've got variables. So let me show you how we do that. So we're going to set up long division. And over here we're going to have 3x plus 5. So long division, we start out by asking ourselves, how many times does 3x go into 3x squared? Well, 3 goes into 3 one time, and x goes into x. How do I turn an x into an x squared? With just one single x. Now remember, what we do now with long division is we multiply to put our numbers underneath here. So 1x times 3x is 3x squared. But we have one extra step now. We also have to multiply this 1x times the 5. So 1x times 5 is 5x. All right, so now long division tells us to subtract these. So to subtract them, I'm simply going to change the sign. So that one's positive, it becomes negative. This one is positive, it becomes negative. So 3x squared minus 3x squared is nothing, and that happens in regular long division too. That number should always go away as much as possible. A negative 7x and a negative 5x make negative 12x. And then just like long division, we bring down the next number. And now we start the process over again. Let me bring up red one more time. So how many times does 3x go into negative 12x? Or what times 3x gives me exactly negative 12x? It's negative 4. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12x. And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Now here you want to make sure that you change the signs. All right, so that's pause or negative, it turns positive. Sometimes a math teacher will tell you to circle it so you know that you change the sign. It's a pretty good strategy. So now I know I change those signs. Negative 12 and 12 goes away. Negative 20 and 20 goes away. These divided perfectly, and our answer is x minus 4. Now you don't need the 1 in front, so x minus 4. So, a little bit longer, but the process is the same as long division. So let's do one more like that, because there's a few other things that can happen that are slightly different from regular long division. So let's do this one. So we got to set up the long division, 6x cubed. Now you can see there's an x squared term that's missing. Follow me now, and trust me, leave some space there and then put your minus 4x minus 4 divided by 2x plus 2. So we're going to start out the same way as before. 2x times what will give me exactly 6x cubed? 3. And to get that x cubed, I need an x squared here because 3x squared times another 2x is 6x cubed. And now when I multiply times the 2, this is why we needed space here. 3x squared times 2 is 6x squared, and there's no x squared up here. And it's positive right now. So now we subtract these, which means we want to change the sign. So this one's positive, make it negative. This one's positive make it negative. So here the first terms become 0, 6 minus 6, and nothing minus 6x squared is negative 6x squared. Bring down the next term, minus 4x. 
So what do we have to multiply to get to a negative 6x squared? It looks like it will be a negative 3x. Multiply this over to here, we get negative 6x squared. 3x times 2 is negative, th oops, sorry, 6. x. Combine these. So we're going to change the sign. I'm going to circle it so I know that I changed the sign. That goes away. A negative 4x and a positive 6x is 2x. Bring down the f negative 4. I think we have one more step here. I'm going to use a different color to help differentiate these. Alright, so what times 2x is 2x? A positive 1. 1 times 2 is 2x. And 1 times 2 is 2. Change the sign. Change the sign. That goes away. Negative 4 and negative 2 makes negative 6. Now, how can I multiply 2x to go into negative 6? I can't. There's no x's here and this x won't ever go away. That tells me we are done. This didn't actually divide evenly. We have a remainder left over here, which happens in long division. And so what you do with that is you take that remainder and you put it on top of a fraction and your divisor, 2x plus 2, goes right there on the bottom in the denominator. So that one had a couple of uh, extra steps where we had to leave some space because there was a missing term and we had a remainder that goes over our denominator at the end. But again, you're still following the steps of long division. All right, so those are our four operations for polynomials. Um, and don't worry, yes, there is an easier way to divide, but we will get that with the next video. Here are some practice problems for you try those out and hopefully that makes some sense. Good luck!